Good morning. How's everyone today? I am not seeing the chat. If you are just joining me, uh, my name is Shelley Pryor. I am a watercolor artist in Ontario, Canada. And every Wednesday morning, I offer a free um, watercolor demo. So if you um, are here and uh, would like to share uh, where you're from, uh, that'd be great. I'd love to hear where you're from. And I just want to see if I can get this uh, get this image up here. Okay. And here we go. All right. So um, let me talk about some of the things that I'm going to be working on here. Let me just find my remote so I can zoom out a little bit. I'm a little bit too close at the moment. There we go. Okay. So, um, I'm going to be working on Arches 140 pound cold press paper. I have pre-stretched it, as you can see. I have um, I wet it for about three minutes, stapled it down to a piece of um, watercolor board, gator board it's sometimes called, and um, I let it dry overnight. And then I staple or I tape down the edges with regular masking tape. The paints I'm going to be using are Da Vinci watercolor. Um, mainly Da Vinci. I actually, I, I'm going to be using a core color, I think today, and uh, possibly a Winsor Newton as well. So I have a variety of different paints, but they are all artist quality. I don't have student quality here. Um, the reason I don't like student quality so much is because the student quality has a tendency to, um, well, it has a lot of fillers to make it inexpensive, right? So you're not going to get the same richness of color. So I always use artist quality for that reason. I've I've tried using student quality and it does have, you know, the, the good pigments in it and stuff, but it just has a lot of fillers as well. So I find that in order to get something really rich and um, saturated, it I end up using more paint. So I don't know if I'm really saving anything or not. So uh, but I like the I like the artist quality. And the brushes I'm going to be using are going to be a squirrel hair type of brush, uh, natural hair because it holds a lot of water, a lot of paint when I need it. Um, that I usually use at the early stages of my painting. And then um, I will also be using a synthetic brush. Um, this one holds a moderate amount of uh, paint and water because sometimes I don't want a brush full. Uh, it has a nice point and I can uh, create some nice details with the synthetics. Okay, so I'll have two water containers. I've got paper towels and um, now I just need to get my, my image drawn out. Sometimes when I do these demos, I, I have it drawn out in advance. It depends on how complicated it is, but I think it's important once in a while to actually show the drawing, drawing process as well. Um, just before I dive into that, I'm just going to say good morning to everyone. Hello, Jan. Um, yes, it's si the sun is shining here too. I'm so happy. Um, actually, we've had so much rain this, uh, this last month. It's nice to see it for a change. Um, hi, Melody. Oh, yeah, it looks like it's nice all over. Uh, hi, Karen. Oh, foggy. Foggy in Northern California, yeah. Actually, we have a little bit of air quality uh, issues here right now. We have fires um, a bit north of us, so our air quality is a little bit low, um, a little bit on the poor side. Diana, good morning. <laughs> Thank you. Um, oh, yeah. Verna, Karen. Dorothy. Yes, th thank you so much for joining me. Okay, so um, I'm just going to jump right in here. Um, you can see this is my vase. This this is actually by um, a well-known um, potter uh, near us, uh, uh, Moorcroft, if this is called. So this is a Moorcroft vase, um, and uh, it it's hand-painted. You know, you see it's different on each side. Um, use a little more light, maybe. 
How about that? A little bit more light. So you can see that it's it's quite a lovely little vase and um, very beautiful blue, deep, deep blue here. But it's got a very shiny finish. And look at how um, look how the light reflects on this. Like I turned on that light, and if I turn it off again, you'll see right here where my thumb is. There's that little circle circle light. And if I turn that off, you can see. So everything that gets reflected in your um, in your uh, shiny surface um, is is a light source. So uh, it bounces and ca catches all the the peaks and valleys. Like this is a valley here. This is a peak here. Um, so it catches in a lot of spots. And it's a very like if I were to draw a line around this, it would be very crisp. So that's how I know it's really shiny. So if I if I'm painting this, I know that I need to have a very, very shiny, um, hard-edged highlight. So, um, oh, okay, yeah. We get we get a lot of fog up here in, in cottage country as well, sort of northern Ontario. And, or I guess that's more mid-Ontario. Mid northern Ontario is really getting up there. Um, you know, Churchill and that sort sort of area. Well, Churchill's actually um, <clears throat> Manitoba, but um, anyway. So um, I'm going to start off with my drawing here. Uh, I will be um, just using an ordinary pencil here. This is a this is a two number two pencil in HB, and um, I will be pr um, drawing lightly. I will use, if I need to erase anything, I'm going to use a kneaded eraser. Um, I, I prefer a kneaded eraser because it's easier on the paper. Um, I, If I've used this type of eraser, a nylon eraser, it works quite well too. But um, my preference is the kneaded because it's just a, that much easier on the paper. This requires, a, you know, kind of rubbing, right? So you're, you're brazing your, your paper, whereas this, you know, you can actually kind of blot it off and then you're not rubbing back and forth on your surface. So if I have to do any erasing, I prefer um, uh, to use a kneaded eraser. Okay, so um, I'm gonna measure where the top of my vase is gonna be. So there and maybe here. So I'm gonna just kind of, this is a study, right? I'm not doing a composition. It doesn't have any other elements or anything. I'm just working on the vase itself. So I'm not gonna worry about, you know, placement and, and that sort of thing. Um, I just need to do the vase. So I'm gonna put the bottom there and I'll put the top around here. Okay, so I put a mark on my paper because uh, that that will help me with my proportions as I'm drawing this out. So <clears throat> now the bottom lip, if I'm looking here, okay, and I've got my pencil and I'm pointing towards the image on the left, um, the top of the vase is there. The bottom of the opening of the vase is just slightly down from there. So overall, That would be about where the, I think where the bottom of that opening is. Then there's this sort of the narrow neck of the, the vase at the bottom where it tapers in. And I gotta estimate where that is. Uh, I'm gonna say right about here. Okay, so I have, you know, sort of placed where my measurements are. Good morning, Anne. <clears throat> um, okay, so, um, now that I have sort of the vertical measurements, I want to start thinking about the, the horizontal measurements. So the width of this vase, based on the height versus width, I would, I'm guessing, I'm eyeballing of course, but I'm eyeballing about, to me it looks like that's about as wide as this would be for as tall as it is. So that's how I'm, I'm working that out. Um, I am going to turn that off. Surprisingly, it actually makes the paper look a little bit brighter and you can see the pencil lines a little better. Um, until I get some paint on the um, paper, 
it sometimes the camera uh, struggles a little bit, right? So I'll keep my hands in there, I'll keep the paint in there and that sort of thing, and that will help, but um, when I get more paint on it, it has an easier time of focusing. All right, so I'm gonna start to try to figure out this, this uh, arch that's here. I see that it actually tapers in a bit so I'm going to taper it in and I will use my eraser I'm, I'm going to need that but I'm making sure that I'm using very light pressure uh, with my pencil because of course anything that I need to correct will be a lot easier if I'm not pressing hard you press hard you indent the paper uh, all that sort of stuff so I don't want to um, create any uh, dents in my paper anything where the paint is going to affect the paint when I paint on it. Um, okay, so it comes in, it tapers down slightly. And then I have this sort of gentle curve like this. The base, now I had that mark there, so I'm imagining this base is right about here. may have it out a little bit too far, so I'm going to bring it in a little bit. Normally, I should say this, because normally what I would be doing is I would be doing all of this drawing on a separate piece of paper, and then all the erasing and everything that I do won't even matter, right? I can, I can erase to my heart's content. Um, but then I will take that paper and I will, let me see if I can grab a piece of paper here. Um, and I will tape it down with my drawing on it and then I will put graphite paper or I will pencil the back of it or something like that and I will use another way to uh, transfer a clean drawing to my paper and for that I usually will use this tool which is a stylus it has a little point on either end um, this is this is what I would use to transfer that image with and it's it looks like it's pointy, but it actually has a little tiny ball on the end. One's, one's a little bigger on one end than it is on the other. So this is a stylus, and that's what that's um, really good for. But I'm hand drawing it on my paper, so I'm, I'm pressing very lightly. Now, I'm, I've actually got this way too shallow. I can see that this really needs to come down more. From the perspective that I'm looking at, you know, if I'm looking really down on the vase, and I can see the opening, so I know I'm looking down on the vase, um, this has to be an oval or an elliptical shape, which is not quite so narrow, not quite so, um, starts becoming a little bit more round. All right, so I'm going to come make that edge on this. Okay, I've got a lot of lines here, so I will do a little erasing. Um, and then I will just put in my clean lines. And I will take my time to do a pretty good drawing because if you don't have a good drawing to start with, you know, you're really going to spend a lot of time painting and it doesn't matter how good the painting is, if the drawing's off, the whole painting's not, you're never going to be happy with the whole thing. So um, take your time and do a good job of this part here. I don't start painting till I'm satisfied. So I'm just going to keep at this for a minute while I get this right. I'm trying to get these symmetrical if I can because 
Symmetry is very important for something like this. Now let's start thinking about the top of this vase. Now I've got an, an, another ellipse here. Ellipses are very difficult. Um, we know that when, we, when you look at the vase like this, it's a big round circle. But as I tip it, that circle becomes more um, condensed, you know, becomes more oval until eventually it's gone, right? So how big or how how round or how squished you make that circle determines your viewpoint well if i can see this much of the bottom that means that this has got to be less up here good morning patricia hi ann i think i said hi to you earlier ann but i'll say hello again um hi cheryl karen Oh, light box is a great idea. And you know, actually, if I have a line drawing done, I can actually tape it to a like a, a, a patio door or something like that on a sunny day. It's nice today. I could actually just tape that to the window, tape my paper over top. It's surprising how, how transparent um, watercolor is. Even though it feels like a harder type of uh, paper, you can actually see through it pretty well. Uh, so make your drawing really dark and then put it up on the window and you put your paper over top. Now you'd have to do that before uh, before um, stretching your paper, of course, because once it's stapled down, it's not trying, you can't tape it over top of your line drawing. So, uh, but a light table is a great idea as well, if you happen to have one. All right, so now looking at this opening, it's actually a little wider than the base, right? This... This measurement here for the base is small, and then the top, which I can't, if I move my hands up, you can't see, but the top is actually a little bit wider than that. So um, I have to keep that in mind. Maybe I have this base a little bit too, too big, perhaps, maybe. But um, I'm gonna see if I can estimate that ellipse here. I think this base could be slightly smaller, just a little bit. Uh, that's more like it. Okay, simple vase, um, and I think I'm just going to leave it at that. I will um, estimate where the flower is now. The flower design that's on here isn't centered perfectly. I thought that was a little too symmetrical so I, I turned it slightly so it would be a little off and um, I'm just going to guess at that. Well actually I could work from this I suppose. And I'm just, I'm, instead of trying to think of this as a flower, I'm looking at every line and looking which direction does it go, how far does it go, um, that sort of thing. I'm trying to hold it at about the same angle as the photo. It might be slightly different. But if I'm working from the actual vase, let me just slide this over. You can see that I'm actually trying to hold it about this well if I hold it for you then it doesn't look right for me so um because because my eye level is different than yours you're looking straight down I'm looking at um at a different angle uh, but you'll see what I'm trying to do here
All right, so um, got the leaves as well. Got got to put those in. Let's get this a little better. All right, so I have pretty much the drawing where I need it. And I'm going to jump right in. Um, could I fuss with it more? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, but because I'm doing this as a demo, I'm not going to take that kind of time. Uh, but I would definitely uh, work on it more. Um, uh, one thing I do want to point out though about this part of the drawing at the top, this um, ellipse, it's not flat on the top and it's not a circle. Um, it's definitely elliptical and uh, of course these need to line up as well. These need to be the, you know, not one high and one low or something like that. Uh, that's one of the trickiest things about doing an ellipse or um, an oval like this is getting the getting the things equal not making this a big curve and this a skinny curve uh, that sort of thing getting them symmetrical is is always a little bit on the tricky side um, now because because there's a volume here there's a thickness here this lip it's not like paper thin right like that would be paper thin the way I've drawn it right there <clears throat> but um, so it's actually got a thickness. So there's an actual inner lip here that's sort of like that. Now it looks like it has a thickness, right? And a lot of people will forget this when they're they're drawing or they're painting. Is is that that you need this this um, you need to indicate this thickness here. All right, so um, I'm going to take my brushes and start painting. So I'm going to start with the lighter um, elements in here, which would be the leaves. Um, it looks like they've used pretty much the same glaze on the leaves as they have the, the center. They've just added a little bit more of a darker green or maybe a little bit of the blue. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, now, one thing we have to keep in mind as I'm painting this is that you know, there's these margins and they're raised, right? They're, they're, I don't know if you can hear that, but um, they're raised up and uh, you can actually see the shine on them where they're raised up, right? So they're, they're actually dimensional and uh, they're lighter as well. So they've probably put the glaze on and then uh, wiped it over the, the raised parts. And that's, that's what makes this settle into those, those um, edges on either side of the, the raised areas. Um, let me just move this over a little bit. Uh, okay, so um, so yeah, so as I do this, I need to um, I need to think about all of these things. So I'm going to start with a very light glaze first, and this light glaze, I'm calling it a glaze because I was talking about the the vase, but the the first wash that I put down, the light wash is going to be the lighter color that I'm seeing in here, so the light veins in here. Uh, when it's dry, then I'll come in and I'll add in those darks. And I have to wait till it's dry, because if I try to do it while it's wet, it'll just bleed in, right? So you have to kind of think through these, these steps as you are um, working on your painting, because if you, if you jump in and you start putting in your shadows before things dry, well, then you're trying, you're scrambling and you're trying to take out <laughs> the dark where it's going where you don't want it, right? So you, you need to uh, think about all this. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with uh, kind of a gold color. I think that's, um, I'm going to say 
that's an areolin. Now areolin is very, very bright by itself. Um, so I'm going to um, uh, dull it a little bit. I think I'm going to take a little bit of raw sienna and mix it into that because it's not quite that um, pure of a yellow. Um, here we go. Uh, all the while, when I'm working this, I need to be thinking about where highlights are too. So um, there's no highlights on any of the yellow areas, so I'll get to that when I get to some of the other colors. Um, but this is just the light color to begin with. You're probably looking at this and thinking, wow, that's really that's really strong. But the thing is, especially with yellows, is it doesn't always stay as bright as what it looks like when it's wet. Plus, it looks, everything I put down right now is always going to look a lot um, darker because it, you're comparing it to white. Compare it to blue, and it's not going to seem as dark as what that seems. So um, we have to kind of look at the actual value of the color. Now I didn't take the time to um, clean up all my pencil lines or anything like that, but um, that's just because um, I wanted to get on with the painting part. Um, sometimes, no, depends, there's no, nothing says you have to clean up your whole drawing either. You, some people love that handmade look of the pencil lines. So sometimes it's good to leave them in, you know. Depends on uh, depends on your own preference, I guess. There's no right or wrong to it. All right, so we have this middle part, and I'm kind of looking at the shape of it. And um, I'm sorry, I've got uh, uh, calls coming in while I'm doing my demo. <laughs> Somebody's not watching obviously. So um, there we go. Um, and there's just a little sliver of it on this side. It's not much. I can see a little bit right there. Okay, so that's pretty much my yellow areas. Now I've got a pink here that I need to do, and it's a little bit of a, a mauve type of pink. So I'm gonna use um, Permanent Rose. Permanent Rose, again, is, is a little bit on the uh, bright side, like in color intensity, like it's too clean of a pink color. So um, I need to tint this. So I'm gonna put maybe a little bit, I'll use some, maybe some cobalt and I'll get that a little bit more purple. And for these first um, initial washes, I am using a um, squirrel hair brush for this. All right, so there's, I've toned down that, that bright pink for now. Now here's where I have to really start looking at uh, this reference here because I see that there is a very, very bright area. Now I could take masking fluid and I could put masking fluid in all of those areas, but for this demo I think I'm just going to um, paint around those sections. So um, there's no right or wrong way. You could do it either way, but I wanted this to look you know, a little bit hand painted so it doesn't need to be perfect. It is hand painted, you know, every one of these vases that you have is a hand painted vase. It's not, um, these are made by an artist, not, um, not in a factory. So I'm just looking for the ridges there and I'm leaving a, a good amount of white there for this highlight. Now it does come down the side of this um, petal. And I have to watch that this, this has to be dry, or the yellow. I don't want to get this into the um, 
yellow that may not be dry. So I'm going to just leave a little margin of white there just because I'm going to be flirting with danger if I mix those. All right, so coming up. And I'm actually going to be painting one petal at a time because there's, they're pretty white in between these. The, the way that they're raised causes them to catch the highlights. So I'm going to be... Actually, by the time I put... I think it actually is... And it isn't actually pure white. It actually has a little bit of pink, so maybe I will go through that. And then I'll come in with the... Um, the darks and that's what's going to separate them. All right, so this this petal has a, a very light the under you know it's curled over so it shows the underside so I'm going to just rinse my brush and I'm going to paint clean water as I get to this little section here. Uh, it's too wet. so that that little section stays quite light. I will come in and um, darken the inside of that with the other glazes, but for now, and there are variations within this. So, you know, it's some areas are super light pink, others are not. So I'm kind of going along with that as well. Hoping that those yellows are dry. They may not be 100%, and if they bleed a little bit, it's not the end of the world. I got that song in my head. So this is shaping up. I really want to be careful with that outer edge. Well, I actually, because the, the blue part's so dark, I don't have to be quite that. Well, actually, the blue doesn't show in the, pic in the photo. So yeah, I want to make sure this edge stays pretty clean. Because I'm not going to paint a background on this. I'm just going to leave the white of the paper. Actually, that did run a little bit into that yellow, but I'm certainly not going to worry about it. All right. Now, things are, things are going to have to dry here before I work on any of the blue parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just... Um, mute and um, blow dry this really quickly. Now, I didn't use any masking fluid on here, so I was able to use a bit of a heat with this with that blow dryer. And um, uh, because, um, it, I, because I used heat, I need for this to cool down to the room temperature. But I always start far away first, and then I get closer with the dryer as, it, as I know that the paint's not going to move around. So... Um, now I have it a little bit dark in here, but um, it'll all even out in the end. I'll just make those adjustments. Uh, now the color I want to use here for this um, vase is going to be a... Um, this is a core color. This one's called Indanthrone Blue. It's a gorgeous blue. 
and it seems like to me that it would be pretty close to what we need. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty intense blue, but really nice. The thing I like about this particular color is that it's a smooth, um, like a lot of blues are granulating, so it looks like they have a little bit of um, um, gravel or something in them then. That's just the unground pigments in them and the granulation. But uh, this one's quite smooth, so when I paint this on, um, it will have a smoother finish. Um, to, I may need to darken this as well, uh, you know, and I'll darken that with probably some Payne's Gray or something like that. But um, for now, I'm just going to do the first wash with this um, in Danthrone Blue, and it's um, uh, got to be fairly intense, like not too diluted. But I really have to be watching where the um, where the uh, highlights are on this boss because there are quite a few as uh, as this goes along. So my hand, this is dry. I can put my hand down. All right, so I can come along the top here. The inside has no, no highlight. So I can safely do the inside. But then we have a highlight on this back edge, sort of from about the midway point. I may have to use a smaller brush for this. So I'm going to pick up a small, because it's a detail, I'm going to use a smaller synthetic brush to just help with this. Okay, so I've got a, that nice skinny line right there, that little space I've left. I'll keep this brush handy. I probably am going to use it again. That was a small um, synthetic. There is yet another highlight. Um, okay, so I've got to watch the... Actually, I'm going to pick, pick this up one more time and get this outer edge here. And I'm just leaving a sliver of white there. So this small th synthetic is helping me to manage my way around some of these little highlights. I could mask them off, but as I said, it's not the only way to do things. So I'm going to um, press on with this uh, method. that shape right if I can. All right, so now looking at the neck of the boss, you'll see that it is definitely darker in the middle than it is at either side. So I really have to be mindful of that. <laughs> I was holding my brush sort of like this and gravity was bringing the paint all the way down into my fingers. So <laughs> I have to watch how I'm holding my brush. Um, so this is going to come in here and it's darker in the middle and as it gets lighter to the edges I'm going to rinse my brush and just paint clean water here. Clean water here. And what happens is that just melts into that and gives you that sort of rounded look. Um, nice and glossy. Um, 
I have another another highlight right sort of directly mirroring that one so it's almost right below it right back to my synthetic brush and I can use this for filling in now once once I get over to the far right hand side, again, it's going to be that um, brighter, it's lighter at the edges. So it's catching a lot more light there. My pink is dry, so I can come right up to it. Get a little bit more color going here. This is could be a little more intense in the middle. And I need to work both sides because I don't want this side to end up drying on me. But isn't this a beautiful color? I just think this one's just such the prettiest blue. So this is coming over and just carefully working around the end of that um, petal there. And now I'll rinse, clean water here. Now that has kind of blended into the other one, the other highlight there. So I'm going to come in and add a little bit more to that very shortly. But for now, I'm just going to move over to this other side because I can't let that other edge dry. I'm working in two different directions here. Um, one thing that's bothering me a little bit is that this isn't round enough or curved enough. So I'm going to see if I can get this a little bit more curved. That's better because it does follow the contour of the um, of the vase itself. Now as I keep working I'm going to have to make sure that my brush isn't wetter than my surface because when your brush is wetter than the surface that's where blossoms happen. So blotting is important. Yeah I agree Karen it's, it's such a gorgeous color this one. Um, now there's a couple of little sort of shiny highlights in there. It's reflecting something. I'm not sure what um, stuff in my room, but um, not entirely sure exactly. You can't really make out what it is. This is not, it's shiny, but it's not a mirror. So, all right, and here, maybe I'll just pick up a synthetic brush. I'm going to pick up a eight, number eight synthetic round, and I will come in and just use the clean water here. And those will start to fill in a little bit, but not entirely. Now I'm going to stick with this synthetic round because it doesn't hold a whole lot of um, water. Um, indigo, it's yeah, indigo is a little bit more green. This one's a little bit more um, warm than indigo is. Um, indigo looks a little bit more black. Um, so uh, I'm going to come in here now. This paint that I'm picking up here, you can see it's not really runny. It's quite um, uh, almost thick, if you can imagine watercolor is thick, but it's it's almost on the thick side where it's not going to move around much. And that's when I can come in and really start to um, get these shapes in here a little bit more. 
and it's not going to move because the paint is a little heavier consistency. So this is a little more buttery paint. Um, you probably you may know the um, difference uh, the the, com the um, I don't know what to call it the analogy or comparison um, of paint can paint um, thickness to um, tea coffee uh, milk cream and then butter and so this would be very buttery paint I'm putting down so that it um, it's sort of as intense as it can get and won't move around so it's it's um, I don't have a lot of water in my brush I don't have a lot of water in my paint either um, okay so now I'm just going to come on down to the uh, lower part here let me just get a little bit more in here because this is got a bit of shape more like that okay um, so there's little bits of um, blue in this uh, lower part and I do have to use my paint a little bit more fluid for this because um, I'm not putting it on I'm putting it on dry paper so it needs to be more fluid when I'm putting it on dry but if I'm putting it on wet, it needs to be more creamy, less runny. <clears throat> and I think that's what a lot of people forget. I know I used to um, forget that if you're putting it into wet, you can't have the paint the same consistency. It's got to be a different consistency when you're working in wet. Okay, and now there's um, a couple of light areas down here as well, so we need to um, factor those in. So we've got a little bit of light happening in this uh, rim here. Ooh, I went a little too dark right there. I can, can see right now I wasn't... I was painting what I thought instead of painting what I see, so let's take some of that off. I'm going to use a rinsed brush and just paint clean water here. I've blotted it though, so that I don't, I'm not making a blossom out of it, I'm just making it lighter. All right, so I'm going to come along and there is a highlight, a couple of little sparkly highlights here. And so I'm painting around those little little spots in the in the vase, and you know these little white areas they're they're so crucial when you're painting uh, something that is shiny. It um, it's what tells the viewer it's shiny because of those were those brilliant reflections. Now if this were a Oh, say a terracotta pot it would not have this kind of uh, finish on it because it doesn't have a glaze right it would just be very flat so it's very important to know what kind of a finish that you're trying to create let me blot my brush and I'm just going to tone down this highlight right here because this one is not pure white it is just it is lighter that's it just lighter Now before I, I should mention that before I started I did soften up my my palette my paints these are two paints and I put them into my palette and they get rock hard but then I put a generous amount of water you know I use an actual eyedropper here and I put water into each of my wells and give it a, a good chance to soften up so you know you can see they're almost almost full with water um, you know, I put quite a bit on there. 
and that's to get that paint softened up. If you just spritz it, you're only softening the top edge, like the surface of your paint. You're not getting into the body of the paint where you're often dipping your brush. Okay, so right about here, we need to start making a bit of a transition. So I'm going to uh, rinse my brush and get that transitioning there. So by touching that, it just blends <clears throat> into the light area, which also is still wet. Okay. And uh, all right, so now I'm coming down to the bottom. Not, oh, I've got that highlight there. I've got to watch for that. Didn't leave quite as much as I needed, <clears throat> but And it seems to get a little bit darker towards the right hand side. So I'm going to put a little more color in here along the bottom. Get this shape nice. You know, I was thinking about putting Payne's Gray in here, but I love how this color looks just like it is. I think it's just really pretty. <coughs> Pardon me. And it can get quite dark, which is what I like about this one. Sometimes you want something that's like a, a royal or a navy. And this one's lovely. It's, you know, sort of reminds me of blue velvet. So all the areas have some paint on them now, other than the highlights, which of course um, aren't going to get any color. Uh, but I could probably soften a few of these little bits here. For example, uh, this highlight sort of softens into this rim. So I'm just taking a and I'll take a smaller brush. I'll take a small synthetic round paper towel and I'm just going to lift a little color here and just with a quick blot and then you get something that looks like it's continuing around the rim a little bit more and there's a few other little highlights in there I think um, which I'm going to pull out so lifting color is another way to get softer highlights in something like this. looking to see okay so I think that's that's okay the way it is um, I'll use my small round here uh, to accentuate a couple of little darks in here perhaps that don't have uh, soft edges sometimes they have hard edges so I can work on dry for that so if you want a hard edge on something, you use a, you, you work on dry. If you want a soft edge, you work on wet, or you work on dry and then you soften the edge. So there's a couple of ways of going about it, um, but. All right, so I'll come in and I'm gonna build up more color on top of some of this because I want some of this blue to be just almost like not thick where it's like raised up off of the paper but I want like two layers so that it's really good coverage right so it's blocking a lot of the white paper coming through 
because I want this color quite um, a dark value. So just coming in and adding another layer here. And you can see it just leaving that first layer. Oh, maybe that doesn't show so well. Let me see if I can adjust that um, on the camera. Um, I'm going to light brighten things up a little bit here. There we go. And uh, I'm going to put the contrast down a little bit. Okay. So. Um, I'll zoom in as well so you can see this a little bit better. All right, so now you can see that, you know, as I come in and I can add little bits of um, extra dark and create a third value. Like, so I have a little bit more intense color. So I'm really getting this color quite um, buttery now so that I can get these extra, extra darks. I don't think I want to add any paints gray to this because I have a really kind of black in it, whereas I just really want this color more intense. <coughs> it's such a gorgeous blue. Um, okay, so here I need to uh, get more color. Adding in these extra darks makes a difference. So, all right, so that's generally how I'm going to go about doing the navy part or the dark blue part of the vase. Now to get to the to the flowers where they have that raised up edges and stuff. Okay, so rinse that out. Um, I don't really want to get my yellows dirty or anything like that, so I'm just going to take one second here and um, get rid of this dirty water. Because that's going to contaminate my yellow very quickly. Um, all right, Can close that, whoops, all right, so now for the flower itself, and you can see that there's these, these sort of lines within, within the um, petals, right, so there's these kind of squiggles in the middle, and then you have these dark dark edges here. So that's what I want to do. I'm going to take the same color here and it's got to get a little bit darker. So I'm going to go maybe with um, a lizard and crimson and maybe I'll mix the indanthrone with it there. And that'll give me a much darker color. A little bit more, a little less pink, a little bit more purple. All right, so for this part here, each petal is smaller than, than the overall wash that I did. So I'm gonna use uh, mostly synthetics at this point because I want a little bit more control. I didn't, um, I didn't draw all these little squiggles and things in here, the, the little lines that are within the, each petal. Um, I'm just going to do that with my paint and I often think that sometimes I, um, I, 
I need to draw everything. But honestly, I think when you're painting, it's good to leave some to be done with your paintbrush. It ha it has a fresher look about it. Um, it, it just, you know, you, you get a little too tight and everything looks a little too controlled and too uh, crisp around the edges, that sort of thing. If you are always using, um, um, you know, an extremely detailed drawing. So I'm going, I'm finding myself using less and less detailed drawings um, as I go. Oh, thanks, Colleen. Hi, Colleen. Um, yeah, so I'm going to use an eight round, I think, for this. I may use my, um, I think this is a, I think this might be a four, but it the numbers are off of it. I don't think it actually ever had it, but, um, but I think it's a four, a three, or something like that. Uh, okay, so... I'm going to use the actual vase to do this with because I can see it more easily than the little image on my screen. And uh, I'm going to, this is a case where I'm going to put the paint on and then I will soften the edge. So I'm, I'm going to go along the edge of this petal here, rinse my brush, blot it, and quickly walk up to that edge with this damp brush. Okay, there's a little bit of water in here, so I'm going to walk up to it. And as soon as I hit it, it softens. And that gives me a nice soft blend. Okay. Um, there's another soft edge here where that squiggle is. So I'm going to paint it in. I, I actually wet between here and here. So. but the squiggle itself is actually dry. So rinse, blot, and just get that edge. I'm going to lift a little bit of this out because I don't want it to fill this in too much. It's actually quite close to that um, that ridge, that raised part of the uh, pottery. All right, so now the other side of this, again, I've got a little bit of uh, darker paint there. There's one of those squiggles right in the middle. So I'm going to go below it. Comes in quite an arch. And I'm going to soften one edge. Right, I'm going to come around the other side of it as well, both sides of this uh, little squiggly shape, and soften. And every time I soften, it's with a, a rinsed, blotted brush. So rinse, blot, soften, and that needs to be done quickly. I can't just go around all of these petals and do all of the, the darker shadows and then come back and do it because that won't work. It'll, it'll dry too quickly. So I need to be able to do that um, while things are still wet. Um, okay, so the this part of the the underside of the um, <clears throat> the petal here is lighter, but it too has a little bit of that shading. So I'm going to come in 
and just very lightly now put this on the light area. So I won't put too much color in there. I dilute, diluted it a little bit to begin with. And rinse, blot, soften. Okay, so I'm creating deliberate hard edges where I want them and softer edges where I need them. All right, so this one, this petal has another squiggle. I can go darker again because this is a darker petal. Um, now clearly this is the sort of thing I could take a whole lot of time and um, make this as accurate as possible but as this is just a demo I just want to get the hit the high or the important air aspects of this so I need to soften this before I finish doing any more because this will dry quickly. And part of the part of the thing is when when I pick up the paint, when I pick up this paint, if I pick it up and my brush is too dry, and then I come to rinse and blot, and it may be already dry by the time I get there, and which which is the case here, it's a little bit on the dry side. So um, I'm gonna have to go a little bit more runny paint in order for this to to work properly blotting my brush soften the edge now there's a another one of those squiggles here And even the paint, the, the glaze that's on here, isn't a perfect smooth wash. So I'm not going to try to make it um, absolutely perfect. Um, I think it would kind of take away from that handmade look um, if, it, if it were too polished and smooth and all of that. Rinse, blot, soften. All right. So you get the, the idea of these um, petals. And um, I could come in even further and create an even deeper shadow. You know, for some of this, this is some of this actually needs to be a little bit darker. So I would come in with a stronger version, maybe a little bit more blue added to it to darken it and cool it off. And um, just pick a few select places to, to add that to make it even more dimensional. Because to create form or dimension, you're going to need more than two values. You need three. Um, at least that, that's been my experience is that, you know, if you want to create volume, you need three values. <clears throat> Um, now I'm going to come in with um, my, just to show you my palette here again, I'm going to put a little bit of my Indanthrone into my yellow that I had saved, a little bit left over, and that's what I'm going to use for my greens. So tying all these colors together. Basically, um, everything I've used here is red, white, or red, yellow, and blue. So primary colors, right? So I'm creating all these colors from from my primaries. And um, all right, so I'm going to come in here with this. Rinse, <clears throat> blot soften. Otherwise this is going to look like a stripe. If I don't soften that, <clears throat> it will look like a stripe. 
Um, there's several little lines here. <clears throat> Tucking a little bit more of that, that green, that darker green in there where I can. Rinse and blot my brush to soften everything else. Just like everything, I can come back in and I can make it a little bit darker. I can add a little bit more in Danthrone, for example, and get that edge a little darker, perhaps. Tuck a little extra dark right into those, those little bits to make it look more dimensional. You're so welcome, Colleen. I'm so glad you joined me, and, and thank you guys for for always joining me. I, I see a lot of the sort of the same faces and, and I'm so happy to see you. I really do appreciate it when you um, join me because why else would I be here if you didn't, right? There would be no point in my showing up. So if you know anybody that el anybody else that might like to see these, then by all means, let them know. Um, They always think that word of mouth is the best the best advertising anyway so I'm going to um, just tuck in a little bit more dark here there's not too much oh there's a little bit of vein there but it's not very noticeable rinse blot soften edges I think there's even a, I, I'm not sure, but I think there's even a share thing. I, I don't know. I think there is. And there's a share, there's a subscribe, there's a bell for notifications, all that stuff. And sometimes I people, people say, oh, I forgot. Well, if you tend to forget, the bell icon is, is really good for that because uh, you get a little reminder. <laughs> People say, well, tell me tell me when you're going live. Well, I can't think to, you know, I get so many people that ask me, <laughs> ask me to remind them of things, and I can't even keep my own schedule straight sometimes. So click that bell, and that will uh, tell you, tell you when I'm live. Uh, so all of these are starting to come together, and we're getting a little bit more dimensional on our, on our vase. And uh, so I'll come back and I'll just work a little bit more on the petal just to get sort of a little bit more of a full, complete painting feeling. <clears throat> and um, Rinse, blot, soften the edge. There's a pair of the little squiggles right in here. Those little, they look like tadpoles.
Okay, rinse, blot, soften edges. Do it quick and you'll have a better success rate. But don't forget the blot. The blot's really important because if you forget to blot, then you just make blossoms. Then you've got a whole other issue. <laughs> so. This actually, this line actually overlaps this one a bit and makes a little bump there. So I'm just going to add that in because I think that's a little bit of character, which I kind of like. Rinse, blot, soften quick. Actually, I'm going to put a little bit more pink into this. And then I will soften. And there's a couple of little streaks, just painterly streaks in there, so I'll put those in to make it look natural. Just because I can do it smooth doesn't mean I should, because that's not what the image is indicating. All right, so I'm going to carry on with this. Now I'm looking at the vase, so there may be little variations that aren't in the painting or in the photograph that you're seeing, um, but I needed to do this in such a way that I could um, give you the uh, idea of what I'm actually looking at. Soften, blot. And I have another little bit of a squiggly thing here. and all that. And then I need to define it on both the upper and lower edges. So you can see I, need, I definitely need to um, darken a few things here. Uh, I'll come back with more layers and the more layers that I build up the more finished this will look. But we started with washes and then we went to um, shading and then to final details. And that's generally how I work. Um, you know, it's a it's a guideline. It's not a rule. I mean, I don't always work that way, but I don't start with details. Uh, starting with details will mess you up every time. Yes, I. That was wonderful, Colleen, and you did it in acrylic. Uh, is that? I think that's the one that. Um, I think that that's the one you're talking about, right? Yeah, good for you. I'm so glad it helped and that, you know, you find these useful. Okay, so I'm going to come in here. There's kind of a small, narrow margin here, so... It's not much. Come in there. Rinse, blot, soften. Okay, 
and a slight bit like lighter on the lighter areas. I don't want to use the same intensity of um, shading on the light areas. Wouldn't make sense. Although that was probably a little too light. Let's come in at a little bit more. Okay, same with this one over here, could be a little bit more, but there needs to be a, a you need to differentiate that, you know, they're different colors, different values there, that you've got one light petal and a dark petal. All right, so my vase is looking pretty, pretty uh, dimensional at this point. Now it would be just a matter of putting in a couple of the, you know, the extra darks like I did here. So um, some of these need those extra extra darks down in there to make it look more dimensional. Because as I said, you need three values um, to create form. Sorry if I sound like a broken record sometimes. <laughs> they say you re retain 10% of what you hear. So if I say it 10 times, maybe you'll remember, right? That's my theory. It took me a long time to remember it. So adding in just, and these are just little, little details, right? Just little, little bits here and there. I'm not redoing everything. I just want to um, emphasize a few things. It's maybe a little darker than I want. Um, okay, so. Now the only thing, the only thing I'm not liking about this so far is, is our little vase looks like it's floating in space. So I want to ground it with a little bit of a shadow. So this is where I'm going to come in. I'm going to get back to my squirrel hair brush, make sure it's really good and clean, and I'm going to wet this whole section around the vase because this shadow is very soft. It's not a um, cardboard cutout, hard edged type of shadow. It's a very soft shadow. So I want to work on a wet surface for that. So I'm going to wet a, an area well beyond where I need to work. And if I tip my paper, you can see, oh, you can see I missed spots here. So I'm looking for a nice sort of uniform satiny sh shine for that. Now, um, I don't want to start introducing new colors here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take kind of all the colors, mix them together and create a gray. Shadows are generally cool, so, you know, a little bit, a little bit more of the in Danthrone. I actually used a bit of cobalt too, I believe, didn't I? I thought I used cobalt there somewhere. I think when I was making the pink, yes but I can make a nice gray here. Mix in some of that green. So all your primaries, your red, your yellow, blue, will uh, give you a gray. So I don't really need to go looking for a new color. I'll put a little more blue in it. There we go. All right, so this brush, this brush is actually going to bleed too far. So I'm going to go to my synthetic brush because you can see that it's like really, really spreading. And I want a little bit more control than that. I want a soft edge, yes, but I also want to um, shape this shadow. So by using my synthetic brush, it won't spread quite so far. Right. I'll come right up to the edge of the 
the vase. Okay, so now the vase isn't floating anymore. It has a nice um, sort of soft shadow. See, a cardboard, like a really hard or dark shadow would really um, kind of kill that. It would just take, take away entirely too much um, attention from the vase itself. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it is. It's, it is interesting that the, uh, the light at the edge of the vase is slightly light, yeah. Um, that it is lighter at the edges. Well, a lot of that depends too. See, I'm, you're getting a lot of the bounced back you know, in this picture, I had a, I had actually paper towels <laughs> underneath, but um, it's it's the light from the paper towels bouncing back and hitting the edges of the vase. Uh, but that's what creates dimension, right? It's having having the light dark to light and um, and the other values in between. That's what creates the form. So um, our vase looks pretty rounded. Uh, the the um, petals look fairly dimensional. I could come in probably do a little bit more on those. Um, now I'm putting my hand in wet paint. And the actual yellow needs a little bit of dimension too. Right now this yellow is looking pretty flat. I didn't really do anything there. So I'm just going to... Yeah, it's just got some irregular brush mark in it. It's nothing, nothing too uh, fancy or anything like that, but just to make it look like it's hand painted. Um, it's a little imperfect, which I love, actually. And um, so now it's got two values. And when that's dry, I can add a little bit more and just keep building up on this as uh, as I need to. Um, I'm not entirely happy with this this looks w wider here than it does in the middle. So I'm going to bring this up a little bit. So I'll make all these little corrections with um, buttery paint here. There. So now that looks more correct. <clears throat> all right. So uh, that'll, that's enough for today, I think. Um, I don't know that our shadow needs, or our highlights need a whole lot here. They just, I could probably tint this a little bit. So if I just took a little bit of blue, my blue color here, very diluted. And just put a little bit in there just to soften that highlight slightly. Um, might even pick up a little bit of the pink in there, but um, it's got to be hardly any color at all. So, that type of thing, it's, it's just enough <clears throat> to um, tint that, that white so that you don't have that big white blob, but, um, but it does need to be nice and crisp around the edges because it's such a shiny surface. Um, so that wraps it up for today. Thank you so much for, for joining and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, you can subscribe or you can do all that stuff. You know, you know the drill. Um, if, you, if you're interested in any, in any um, at length uh, projects, then I have a lot available on my uh, YouTube or on my, um, my um, website, which is at the bottom of the screen there. So uh, you could visit that. I have Zoom classes that are um, upcoming. I have Zoom classes that are um, also uh, past, which you can purchase the recordings and watch them on YouTube. You get a, a private link to it. And um, so it's only available to uh, those who register. And um, yeah, so I'll be, I'll be posting more Zoom workshops um, for the fall very soon. Um, I have a wedding coming up. My daughter's getting married in a couple of weeks, so I'll be a little bit busy for the next couple of weeks. But um, otherwise, uh, I'll be I'll be posting some of those fall projects very soon. All right, thanks again, everybody. 
Take care. Bye for now.